Um, I like I've like I've said before many times. Uh, I definitely I definitely don't like a, a dead church. So if y'all want to make some noise, make some noise. Um, that's that's a great thing. I uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, at the game, at the game Friday night uh, for Overthorpe, I could tell a a big shift in that atmosphere because it got loud. And uh, the fans were into it, and uh, it was a great thing to see. And um, same thing with church this morning. Let's get into it. Uh, you know, make some noise. If you want to make some noise, sing, clap your hands. Whatever you want to do to praise God, that's always a good thing. So um, I know we've got a lot of people out, a lot of people doing you know different things on this holiday weekend. And uh, But, but y'all are here. We're here. And uh, most importantly, God is here. And uh, there's no telling what can happen in this place this morning if we just let him take over. Let him take over every part of this service. So um, let's pray and let's invite him into this place. Dear God, we just thank you for giving us this morning. Thank you for giving us another opportunity where we could come and praise your name. Jesus, I just pray that you would just anoint each and every part of this service. God, I pray that you would just touch in this praise and worship that's about to go forth. And God, we'll just give you all the praise and glory in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
doing all the good things the word taught them to do then i heard a brother praying someone told him take us to the lord in prayer and lead us to the lord lead us to the lord in prayer take us there open up the lines that build a bridge between god and man and someone lead us to the throne of grace again. Teach us, Lord, to enter your gates with great thanksgiving, and teach us how to pray for God, my will, but thine be done, Lord. A prayer is prayed with passion when a heart can feel the need. Prayer will pierce the darkness, touching heaven on this road to God in prayer. And lead us to the Lord. Come on down, they can. Hope everybody's had a great week so far. Man, it's quiet in here. <laughs> Not even the kids making noise. It's almost kind of nice. I hate to ruin it. <laughs> if, uh, if y'all know my kids, they're all the time making noise. I don't know what's wrong with them this morning. <laughs> so um, I do want to thank everybody for coming out this morning. Like I said, I know there's a lot going on. I know a lot of people have got, you know, plans for later on today and for tomorrow. But uh, thank you for, you know, taking some time out of your weekend uh, to come and, and to, you know, be with us. And um, we, uh, we do have one announcement. Um, and if you weren't here Wednesday night, uh, just listen to this carefully um, because there uh, was a mistake on my part. Um, I said the wrong date. The uh, work day for the carpenter's closet is going to be this coming Saturday. Um, so that's Saturday, September the 7th, so not the 14th. Um, so this coming Saturday, work day for the carpenter's closet, um, that is going to begin at 9 a.m. And if you have any questions, um, see Sister Julie. Julie, if you'll raise your I think everybody pretty much knows Sister Julie. So, and uh, Let's give Sister Julie a hand. She does such a great job with our community outreach. And um, that's, that's something that's, that's very in, important, you know, to her, and it's very important to myself and this church. 
um, in this community. Um, and that, that's what it's all about. It's about reaching out to the community. Um, it's not about, you know, us getting accolades or, you know, look at me, you know, look at what we're doing. That's not what it's about. It's about giving back. Um, and we have the ability to, to give back, and I'm glad that we do. Um, so, so thank you, Sister Julie, for heading that up. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people that help her. Um, if you uh, aren't involved in the community outreach, um, if you'll, you know, come talk to her after service, you know, she'll, she'll tell you, you know, what it's all about, um, tell you, you know, different things that we do. I know we, we do clothing drives. Um, we have the uh, food for friends uh, that we do down there for the uh, schools. And um, so uh, lots of different things going on inside the community outreach. And uh, I'm sure she'll find a way for you to help um, if, you're, if you're willing to help. So, um, of course, there's a lot of different uh, prayer requests. Uh, still, you know, can, uh, remember Sister uh, Tara Keeler, she's uh, recovering. Um, I talked to um, her son, Philip, uh, Friday night, and uh, he said that she's, she's doing really good. Um, said that she's, uh, she had her last set of tubes taken out and uh, everything's going great so far. And uh, he said, you know, that she said, you know, just to keep praying for her. And uh, she's, um, she's hoping to get to feeling better enough to where she can be back in church with us. So, um, so I'm praying for that as well. And then uh, also want to remember, uh, continue to remember brother Kim Caldwell um, as he's, you know, as he's battling, I've heard there's been a, a shift in that situation for the good. And that's, that's a, good thing. I'm glad that we serve a God that is a miracle working God. He is a healer. And um, if uh, you've got an unspoken prayer request this morning, if you'll raise an uplifted hand and just know that he, he will work in your situation, just, just give it to him. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, again, we just thank you for this day. Jesus, I just pray that you would just touch in each and every one of these situations, dear Lord, by the uplifted hand. God, dear God, the unspoken prayer request. Lord, we might not have said it with our mouths this morning, but you can look down and you can see the heart, dear Lord. You see the mind. You see the thoughts of your people. You see the needs. God, I pray that, that you would be mindful of these needs and you would have your will in each and every one of them, dear Lord. Jesus, I just pray that you would just continue to move in this community, dear God. Just put a revival fire in us, dear God, that can't be extinguished. Jesus, I just pray that you would just, just touch in the remainder of this service as well, dear Lord. God, I pray that you would just be in the word that's going to go forth, dear Lord, be in our Sunday school classes. Jesus, I just pray that you would just touch in our offering this morning, dear Lord. Let us be able to give with cheerful hearts this morning and break it and bless it and multiply it for the use of your kingdom here at Mount Pleasant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and in a little prayer from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love, and he wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Hear a little prayer, we're turning, you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Feel a little prayer, we're turning, you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Hear a little prayer, we turning, you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. It'll be all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Just a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. It'll be all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. 
Hear our faintest cry, He will answer by and by. When you feel the little prayer will turn, you know that the fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It'll be all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It'll be all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Questioned by certain circumstances, things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision, the frustrations they get so out of hand. But then I am reminded. That I've never been forsaken. I never had to stand on test alone. And as I look at all my victories, the spirit rises up in me. Cause it's through the fire my weakness was made strong. He never promised. That the cross would not get heavy, and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. So just remember when we're standing. In the valley of decision, and the adversary says, Give in, just hold on. Sunday will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. Many times I question my certain circumstances. Things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision. My frustrations they get so out of hand. But then I am reminded that I've never been forsaken. No, I never had to stand on death. Alone. And as I look at all my victories, the spirit rises up in me. Cause it's through the fire my weakness was made strong. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. Our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. So just remember when we're standing in the valley of decision, and the adversary says, Give in, just hold on. Father will show up. And he will take you through the fire again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. 
just whatever wind was standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again just hold on our Lord will show up and he will take you through the fire again. If our student ministries would like to be dismissed, they can at this time. This might be a little bit of a shorter service today. Um, And I'm not interested in keeping y'all, you know, from y'all's plans and stuff like that. But um, I did receive a, a word on Friday from from God, and and uh, I think it's something that's important. And so, um, just just pray this morning that that His word comes through this. Uh, I don't want it to be my words. I want it to be His words. So. Um, if you will, if you'll turn to, uh, if you've got your Bibles, if you'll turn to Mark chapter 2, and I'm going to start with verse 1. I appreciate the Sutton family this morning for handling our praise and worship. Let's give them a hand. They, they do amazing. We are blessed to have that family here at Mount Pleasant. All right, Mark chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And again he entered Capernaum, and after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house, immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men, And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins? but God alone. But immediately, when Jesus perceived them in His Spirit, that they reasoned thus within themselves, He said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of God, or the Son of Man, has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, saying, so, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. You can be seated this morning. Now there are several things that I want to talk about in this passage that, that really stuck out to me. And one of, one of the first things that immediately sticks out to me in, in verse number one, it says, it was heard that he was in the house. It was heard. Now everybody, I'm sure in this place, knows how word travels. Especially, you know, if you, you know, Oglethorpe County, word travels fast, okay? Faster now, you know, than ever before. You know, when I was, when I was growing up, we didn't have, you know, all this, this Facebook stuff and all this, you know, different social media stuff, but word still got around pretty fast. Now, you know, you know about something, you know, a minute after it happened because, you know, somebody's posting about it, and then the people that don't have Facebook, 
they'll come up and they'll say, you know, what well, did you, you know, did you hear about this? You know, I know you don't have Facebook, but you need to know what's going on. And word travels fast. And so when they heard that Jesus was going to be here, that word traveled fast. And the people got excited. And it says in verse number two, it says, immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And I got to thinking about that, how awesome that must have been that you know you knew Jesus was in the house and that so many people rushed in. And, and why did they rush in? You know, why did they rush in? Because it was Jesus. And they knew. People rushed in because they had needs. People rushed in because they wanted to hear what He had to say. They rushed in because they knew the Son of God was going to be in that house. Now, let's think about this morning. He's here this morning. Now, we don't have a full house this morning, but y'all came. Y'all came because you knew He would be here. I hope that's why you came. And even though He's not here an actual person, His Spirit is here this morning. And that Spirit has the same power to do miracles just like He did physically back then. It does. And if people could get that mindset, man, you'd have people rushing in just all over the place trying to get in this place. And I'd love to see that. I'd love to pl see this place so full that there's not even you know, room in the door area back there. That there's you know, people you know, lined up in the foyer. And, 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 not, and not to come here and experience the praise and worship. Definitely not to hear me speak, but to experience God. To have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus. And that's, what, that's why I come to church. I come to church so I can have an encounter with Jesus. So I can spend some time with Him. Now, I don't have to be at this place to experience Him. But you know what? I'd rather experience Him here with all y'all on a Sunday morning than sitting at my house not doing anything. Or sitting at my house experiencing Him. I want to be where the people are. I think that's... Is that Little Mermaid? It might have been, yeah. I just quoted the Little Mermaid in church. But anyways, I want to, I want to be where the excitement is. And, and yeah, it, you know, my, my house is great, but when we all bind together and we all come together, that excitement builds. And when that excitement builds, that's where I've talked about in the past couple of weeks, that atmosphere can begin to take place to where God can come in and He can do the miraculous. He can do it. So just know that He's here this morning. You're here this morning. You're here. He's in the house. You're in the house. And great things can take place. So, I feel like there's, there's a part of us, and this isn't, this isn't just here. This isn't just Oglethorpe County. This is something that I think takes place all across America is that, that people, people don't long, they don't desire to come into the house of God like they did right here. I mean, they know that He's going to, they know He's here. Why aren't they rushing in the doors? Why aren't they filling up the parking lot? Because Lord knows on Black Friday, if people think, yeah, I'm not even talking about getting stuff for free. I'm talking about getting stuff at a discounted price. If people think that they can get something, they're going to line up the parking lot, they're going to line outside in front of the store, and they're going to try and get whatever they can. Well, I'm, I'm telling you this morning, He's got a gift for you. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything. So why aren't people lining up out in front of the church? It's because we're too concerned with material things. Things that don't even matter. Now, I'm not preaching against Black Friday. Don't think that. Don't think, you know, Levi's, you know, if he sees us out at Black Friday, you know, he probably thinks we're going to hell. I've been out there before too. 
to get a TV or, you know, different things, you know, I've, I've, I've sat out there, you know, to, to get my little, you know, discount or, or whatever it may be. But that, that nothing has ever stopped me from coming to church. Unless I've been just physically ill, you know, to the point to where I couldn't get out of bed or something, you can't stop me from getting to this place. Because I know that this is where Jesus is. I know that this is where I get to experience Him. And so I'm so glad to know that there were some people excited that they gathered in this house. But then there was a man who had this need this paralytic. And it, it might sound sad at first because I would hate for somebody, as much as I would love this place to be filled, I would hate for somebody to drive past this place and, and not stop in because they didn't feel like there was room for them or they didn't feel welcomed or, or anything that would keep them from coming into the house of God. In this case, it was because the house was so crowded the house was just full. Has everybody, has anybody ever been in a house or something like that? It, I'll say this like at like Christmas time or Thanksgiving to where, you know, you got all these family members and friends over and stuff and there's hardly room to walk. You know, you're having to eat on the couch and, you know, eat, you know, with this little, you know, tray or something like that. And I mean, the house is just full. I can go ahead and tell you, I can't stand it. I hate that feeling. I'm the type of person that I will literally sit there while everybody else eats and, you know, allow them to eat, and then I'll get up and fix a plate after that just because I, I don't like it. I don't like, you know, that, that feeling of that, you know, that crowd or anything like that. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people tell me, they say, well, you know, you go to Georgia football games and that's crowded. I have my own little technique of, you know, how to avoid the crowd at Georgia football games. And one of the things is – I get there, I sit down, and I don't move. You know, after that, you know, I'm there. So, but I, I, I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of crowds. I'm not. So they came in and they see this chaos, because that's what I like to call it. At Thanksgiving, it's like, or Christmas is like chaos sometimes. And they see this chaos inside the house, but they know that this man's got a need. And they know the person that can meet his need is inside this house. So instead of saying, you know what, it's just it's, it's not going to happen today. Instead of just giving up, they found a way. They found a way to get inside that house. And so it says that they broke through the roof and they let his bed down into Jesus. They broke through the roof. If I've got a situation that's so bad that I've got to have Jesus at that point in time, like right then, and something's standing in my way, and I don't try to move it out of the way so I can get to Jesus, it's my fault. And I got to thinking when I was reading this passage, how many times... Do we need something from God? We know where to get to Him, but there's something standing in our way from getting to Him. And once we see that thing standing in our way, we just say, you know what? You know, maybe it's just not meant to be. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's not supposed to happen. There's been lots of times, countless times in the Bible that people had things in their way. They had to get through something in order to have a breakthrough. This man needed a breakthrough in his life. He needed a breakthrough that day. But something was standing in his way. And he tore the roof off. Literally, they, they tore the roof off this house. If you've got a situation that's so bad, and you feel like that, that there's something, that it, it's, it's inside something, just tear the roof off that situation. Find a way to get to God. Don't let anything stand in your way of your miracle. Don't ever do that. When, when the children of Israel were fighting the Philistines, who was standing in their way? Goliath. 
David came and he took Goliath down. When Moses was trying to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, Pharaoh was standing in his way. And he went and confronted Pharaoh. And you know what? There had to be some action. God just didn't do it right then and right there. There had to be some action on the parts of these people. So yes, faith is a great thing. You've got to have faith that God can move whatever's in your way out of the way, but there's also got to, got to be some action on your part. David had to go sling the rock at Goliath. Moses had to go confront Pharaoh. And these men had to go tear the roof off to get to Jesus. There had to be some action. How many of us are letting things stand in our way and we're not taking action? We're just saying, well, you know, if it's God's will, He'll move it. It may be God's will, but a lot of times it's going to require action on your part. In Matthew eleven twenty two, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. That's, that's important. I'm not, I'm not discrediting the faith. You've got to have faith. That's where it all starts. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now notice, he said, have faith in God. But then he says, whoever says to this mountain. And then it says, those things that he says will be done. And he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask. All those are things that you have to do. You have to speak to the mountain. You have to ask God. He can do it. And you can have the faith that He can do it. But you've got to let your faith take action. Take action in, in your words. You've got to let it be seen in what you're doing. Notice there, He only, he only mentioned faith once. But He talked about speaking three times. He talked about speaking to that mountain three times. And that's why the, the, the faith the faith is just, just a, a, a little part. It says later on, in, it says in Matthew, it says Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, just a little faith, just a little bit of faith, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So there's, there's lots of different things right there that, that God gives us a layout. He says, you have to speak it, you have to pray, you have to fast. If you care about something that much, if, if you've got a mountain standing in your way and you want it moved and you're not telling it to move, you're not praying about it, you're not fasting about it, then how bad do you really want it moved? It's on us to do these things. If you want God to change a situation in your life, You've got to seek Him. You've got to seek the change. You've got to pray about it. You've got to fast about it. Yes, you can have faith that He's going to do it. But like I said, it's going to require some action on our part. And a lot of times, it's not going to happen 
just overnight. Your mountain might not move just, you know, you know, one day it's here, the next day it's gone. It's not going to happen like that all the time. Yes, there are some times where, you know, God will just take and just, just wipe it out. It'll happen. But if, if it works like in y'all's life, like it works in mine sometimes, a lot of times it, it, takes, it takes some time. And patience is one of those things that, that I struggle with. I struggle with patience. I don't know about y'all, but I do. We live in a, I call it a fast food society, to where we're to the point to where if we want something, we want it immediately. We can have it right now. You can go through a drive through and, man, you can go through a drive through and, and get macaroni and cheese at Chick-fil-A now, not today, but like amazing mac and cheese at Chick-fil-A. It's awesome. You can go through and get all kinds of stuff. If you can't go through a drive through and get it, you can pick up your phone and, and do the Uber Eats or whatever. <laughs> not here either. But you can, we, we live in a world where, you know, if you want something bad enough, you'll go get it or you'll find a way to get it. How many people, you know, if they need something, you know, they drop what they're doing and then they run to Walmart and just get whatever they need and then head back to the house. They don't sit there and, you know, think about it and think about it and say, well, you know, I don't, you know, I don't really need it that bad, you know, so I'm just going to... No, normally if you need something, you just get up and go get it. You don't even think twice about it. So why don't we do the same thing in our walk with God? When we need something, just go after it. Just go get it. Let Him provide it. But go get it. Go seek it. Don't just sit there because if you just sit there, it's never going to happen. But if you'll get up, and if you'll put some action behind that faith, He can do it then. He can work a miracle. I just I, I love this story of them tearing the roof off this place. Because there wasn't enough room. Now, Another thing that I want to talk about in, in this passage is the fact, and this may confuse some people, in verse 5 it says, when Jesus saw their faith, He said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, where, well, you know, obviously this guy had physical problems. You know, why would, why would Jesus say that his sins are forgiven? You know, why didn't Jesus just, you know, go ahead and tell him, you know, right from the get-go, you know, you know, get up and walk, you know, arise. Why did he tell him his sins were forgiven? And when I was reading that verse, it struck me that, you know, his, his physical ailment was secondary to his spiritual ailment. That sin that is built up inside of you. And we all have sin. We all do sin. We were born into sin. So sin is something that we've all experienced before. And all, all that I know is that there's only one person that can forgive you of sins. And that's Jesus. And that's what the Pharisees started to get on Him about. And you know, who is, who is this guy that thinks that he can forgive sins you know he said only God can forgive sins and so I think not only did Jesus know that his spiritual ailment was the primary focus here but he wanted to show them you know what I'm more concerned about this guy's spiritual life than I am his physical part right now but I'm going to go ahead and take care of both of them he showed His power right here. 
It says that they reasoned within themselves. And it says, why do you reason about these things in your heart? When I read that, I got to thinking about, you know, when I have things standing in my way, and I sit there and I let my mind start working, and I start to, you know, reason out, well, you know, is it really, is it really worth it doing this? Is it, you know, really worth the time and the effort? It had been easy for those guys to say, you know what, it, it's, it's full up in the house, you know, we're, we're good. But they put forth the time and the effort to tear the roof off that house and let this man down in because he wanted it bad enough. So I ask you this morning, the things that you're going through, the miracles that you need in your life, how bad do you want it? What's standing in your way between you and your miracle? What's standing in your way of you and, and a, a change that you need in your life? What's standing in your way of you and the sin that you struggle with? The sin that we struggle with? What's standing in our way? What's standing in the way of this church and revival? Because there's lots of different things that can stand in the way of those situations. But what are we doing about them is the bigger question. And how bad do we want to see those things happen? How bad do you want revival in this church? How bad do you want to see your family succeed and not struggle? How bad do you want that sin that you've been struggling with to be taken away? Because if you want it bad enough, it'll happen. But you've got to want it. It's not that God can't do it. It's not that at all. We've got to want it. And if you want something bad enough, you'll do it. You'll do what it takes. My dad, one of the things that he's always said to me, and this has always stuck with me because this, I used it in my thought process. He tells me, he says, you know, people are going to do what they want to do. And that's true. And if people wanted to be at this church this morning, they came. They found a way to get here. But if you didn't want to be here this morning, you wouldn't be here. You know, if you, if you want to go eat Red Lobster for lunch, you get in your car and you drive to Red Lobster. It's just what it is. That's what you want to do. If somebody wanted to be at the lake this morning, they'd have, got, they'd have found a way to go to the lake. So people are always going to do what they want to do. And a lot of times, our thoughts, our thought process, God takes a, a back seat into that. I'm not talking to everybody. I, I, I'm, I'm not talking to just y'all. I'm talking to myself as well. If God is not the first priority in my thought process, then it will show in my actions. It will. And it will show in what I'm trying to pursue. Because if I'm trying to pursue something in my life, then I'm going to take the necessary steps in order to see it happen. To see it come to fruition. In Isaiah 55.11, it says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent. I love that verse. It said, The word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. I love that. What words are coming from your mouth? What are you speaking into your situation? Are you speaking change? Are you speaking healing? 
Are you speaking negative about it? Are you just complaining about it and sitting there and doing nothing? Are you getting up and doing something? Are you saying, you know what? This mountain's going to be moved in my life. This giant is going to go down. This captivity, these chains that I've been wearing, they're going to come off. You've got to speak it. I've told you all so many times, I'm a huge believer in the power of the spoken word. And it's because I've, I've seen it happen over and over and over again. And it's because there is power in your words. Now, unfortunately, there's power in your words to destruct. There's negative power in your words. And then there's good power in your words. There's the power to heal. So what are you speaking this morning? What are your actions this morning concerning what you're going through? If you'll stand with me this morning. I told you I didn't, I didn't have some long, you know, drawn out service or message this morning. I just wanted to talk to us this morning to try and encourage us that if you've got something going on in your life and you feel like that it's, it's too big for you to handle, just know that you can give it to God. And if there's something standing in your way of giving it to God and Him acting on it, then remove it. A lot of the times, I'll tell you this, I've been in my own way of getting a miracle. And that's something people don't like to talk about. People don't like to talk about them being the thing that's in the way between them and their miracle. Because that would have to you know, show fault within ourselves. Well, I can go ahead and tell you this morning, I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect. And yes, I get in my own way a lot. It happens. So if you've got something inside of you that's getting in the way of you receiving a miracle this morning, step out of the way and just give it to God. He wants to take it from you. He wants to hold you in His hands. He wants to take those chains that you feel bound by. He wants to break them. If you feel like you're in bondage this morning, give it to Him. If you feel like that, that you're struggling with depression, give it to Him. But if we don't act on it, if we don't hand it over to Him, He can't take it and He can't make a miracle out of it. If you feel like there's not enough room to get into the house this morning, I'm telling you, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room down here at this altar to come and seek Him. So tear the roof off of your situation and get down here and let Him work in it. If you've got a problem with what you feel like is some sin that you've been battling, just give it to Him and get out of the way. Don't stand in the way. Don't stand in the way of what God wants you to have in your life. He wants to bless you. He wants to pour His Spirit out into you. He wants to pour His Spirit out into this church and into this community. But do we have room for Him? Do you have room for Him this morning? Are we going to make room for Him this morning? Because I can go ahead and tell you, if you'll make room for Him this morning, and if, he'll, if you'll give Him what you're going through, He'll make a way. He'll make a way out. He'll do the miraculous on your behalf. But it takes action on your part. you got to step out in faith. Just like when, when Peter stepped out of that boat, when Jesus called to him, he stepped out. And he walked on the water. But just notice that when he got his eyes off of Jesus, 
that's when he started to sing. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus this morning. Keep your eyes on him. Let him take care of it. Because he's God and I'm not. Yes, there's things He can do through us. But without Him, none of it would be possible. I honestly, truly believe that His Spirit living inside of us has the capability to do the miraculous. I believe Sister Julie could lay hands on somebody that's, that's you know, dealing with you know, blindness or something and they'd be healed. And Sister Julie, or any of us, we may have that faith that He can do it. But are we going and actually laying hands on them? Are we acting on it? Yeah, we can have the belief all day that He can do it. But where's the action? What are our actions? So if, if like I said, if you're struggling with something this morning, or you've got something standing in your way, act on it. Don't just sit back and let it be in your way. Act on it this morning. I'm going to open up the altar. And let's just let's spend some time in prayer. Even if even if you, you know, don't feel like you got something that you're struggling with that's in your way, just come worship him this morning. Because when we can all worship together, like I said, that's when this atmosphere can change in this place. That's when the atmosphere from the miraculous to take place can be present. I don't know what everybody's needs are in this place this morning. I can't read minds. You know, I don't I don't have the you know a gift like that or anything like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you've got going on in your life. But I do know this. I know who can take care of it. And I know that if you'll give it to Him, He'll go to work on it. And He'll make a way. And He'll move that mountain out of your way. Let's worship Him this morning. This altar's open up if you want to come. You.